Hey guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here, and today you join us in the Czech Republic where we're going to be taking a look at how a pro custom hockey jersey is made. But of course, bear in mind that there's lots of different types of jerseys out there, some that are embroidered, and the ones that we're going to be looking at in this particular video are all sublimated designs. Now, essentially, the process of making a pro custom jersey can be split into three different parts. The first part is going to be actually having the design created. Now this is where you get to play with what type of color you want, what type of logo you want, how big you want the logo. This is all done in software that deals with vector files. Essentially images or pictures and logos that don't lose quality regardless of how big or small you make them. Which is what you'd want when you're going to be turning it into a physical element like a garment or a jersey in this case. Now from there the design that you come up with would be then sent to the jersey manufacturer, in, the, in this case where we are right now, where they'll put it into their own software, where they'll essentially arrange the different pieces of the jersey, the chest, the shoulders, or the arms, the back, all of these pieces are separated on, I guess you could refer to it as a canvas, and then from there the actual jersey design is printed onto a special type of paper. Now something that I noticed that I didn't really expect is when the jersey is printed onto this special type of paper, the colours don't look anything like what you'd expect them to look like. The gold jersey that we created while we've been here almost looked, I guess you could say cream, and the black jersey looked almost purple. But of course as you're probably guessing, once the process is complete and the design gets attached onto the actual fabric, the colours are then exactly what you'd expect them to be like. So once the design of the jersey is printed, it's then taken over to a rolling heat press where at this point you get to select the fabric that you want to use. Now again, something that caught me off guard is all of the fabrics are white. So any red jerseys, black jerseys, whatever color jersey you see when you're using the sublimated process started off white and then the color is applied to it during this rolling heat press process. So after you select the fabric that you want because these different type of textures, thick jerseys, thin jerseys, ones that you could say have almost like kind of like holes in them, lots of different type of textures. You then take the fabric and also the printed design on the special paper to a rolling heat press machine where the two are put together and the design and the colors from the design are then permanently attached onto the fabric. The colors don't fade over time, they don't wash out over time. Once this process is complete, the result that you have is for life. The next process from here is to take the fabric that now has the design and the colors onto it, onto a cutting board where all of the different pieces and elements of the jersey are cut, ready for the final process, which will be the stitching. Now, depending on where all of this is done, the designing of the jersey is done at a separate location. The actual printing and also cutting of the jersey is done at a separate location. And also the stitching, in many cases, can also be done at a separate location. When you're looking at one-off designs like the ones that we're doing, you can see that it's quite labor intensive and it's quite a manual process. But if you're, say, looking at a team order, the different components of the jersey, like the front, the back, the arms, are already pre-cut and it would just be the design template or the special paper with the design and colors on it that gets laid over the top of them and then they go to the rolling heat press machine. As you can imagine, this just speeds up the process when you're essentially creating the same design of a jersey, but multiple times for a big team.
The last and final part of this video is the stitching process, which again, to my surprise, all of this is done manually. I think when you envision a jersey, you just expect it to kind of be spat out of a machine and it's ready. But this is something that goes through a lot of people's hands to make sure that it comes out at the quality standard that you'd be expecting a pro custom jersey to be at. So in this part of the process, all of the individual pieces of the jersey that were printed onto the fabric are then stitched together. The jersey is then ironed and then put into its plastic packaging to be shipped to its destination. So as always guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Our time in the Czech Republic has been awesome. I'm looking forward to coming back here in just over a week for a separate video, which you can find out about if you head over to our Instagram page. Link will be down below in the video description. Big thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. And if you want to see more videos on how things in hockey are made, make sure you comment down below and let us know what you want us to shoot next. I really want to see how pucks are made. I know there's videos that are out there on the internet already, but some of them are quite old. I'd like to see an updated version. If you want to see that too, comment down below and let me know. As always, thumbs up the video. Make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of the videos that we post. And take care till the next one. Peace.